Ever wondered why cybercrime is such a booming industry? What fuels this digital underworld? Perhaps it's because we live in an increasingly digital age, where every aspect of our lives is intertwined with the internet. From banking to shopping, socializing to working, we're all plugged in all the time. And where there's opportunity, there's also exploitation. Cybercrime has grown in prevalence, becoming an industry of its own. The economics behind cybercrime operations is a fascinating subject. Stay tuned as we delve into it. Behind every successful cybercrime operation, there's a strong economic motive. The digital realm is not just about ones and zeros, it's also about dollars and cents. Cybercriminals are driven not by chaos, but by cash. They are entrepreneurs, albeit of a darker variety. Their business model might seem complex, but it's really quite simple. They steal data and then they sell it. Your credit card number, your social security number, your email address, these are all commodities in the cyber underworld. Each piece of information has a price tag, and the more personal the data, the higher the price. But selling stolen data is just one part of the revenue stream. Another lucrative avenue is ransomware, a type of malicious software that encrypts a victim's files. The cybercriminals then demand a ransom, usually in the form of digital currency like Bitcoin, to restore access. This form of cyber extortion has proven to be incredibly profitable, with victims often willing to pay up to avoid loss of valuable data or prolonged downtime. It's a cycle of crime and profit that feeds on itself. The more money these cyber criminals make, the more resources they have to invest in sophisticated hacking tools and techniques, making them even more dangerous. It's a high stakes game of cat and mouse, with the prize being not cheese, but cold hard cash. As they say, follow the money. In cybercrime, it leads to a labyrinth of dark transactions. Cybercrime operations aren't random. They function like well-oiled machines with a business model as sophisticated as any legitimate enterprise. Let's break this down. In the world of cybercrime, there's a clear hierarchy, much like in a traditional business. At the top, you have the kingpins, the masterminds who orchestrate the entire operation. These are the individuals who identify potential targets and devise strategies to exploit them. Next in line, you have the coders. These are the technical wizards who create the malicious software used in these attacks. They're the ones who build and maintain the tools of the trade, viruses, ransomware, spyware, you name it. But what's a tool without someone to wield it? That's where the fraudsters come in. These are the actors who actually carry out the attacks. They're the ones who send out phishing emails, infect computers, and pilfer sensitive data. And then, there's the money mules. Their job is to launder the illicit gains, making the money trail as difficult to trace as possible. They might set up fake bank accounts, use cryptocurrencies, or employ a myriad of other tricks to obscure the source of the money. But none of this would be possible without the brokers. These individuals are the glue holding the operation together. They connect the various players, ensuring that everyone has what they need to do their job. They might source new coders, find mules, or even identify new targets. In essence, these operations are a collaborative effort, each player with a vital role to play. And they're not working in isolation either. They're part of a larger cybercrime ecosystem, an underground network of criminals all working together to maximize their ill-gotten gains. This ecosystem is constantly evolving, adapting to new technologies and law enforcement strategies. It's a dynamic, fluid entity, as innovative and entrepreneurial as any Silicon Valley startup. So it's clear that cybercrime operations aren't just a bunch of rogue hackers. They're organized, efficient and frighteningly professional. Like any other market, the cybercrime industry is shaped by supply and demand. Diving into the cybercrime industry, we find it operates much like any traditional market. Supply, demand and price are the driving forces. This might sound unusual, but let's break it down. On one side, we have the supply, which is primarily driven by the availability of hacking tools and software vulnerabilities. These are the raw materials of the cybercrime industry. The easier these tools are to obtain, the more people can engage in cybercrime activities. The dark corners of the internet, particularly darknet markets, play a crucial role here. These encrypted online platforms offer a haven for cyber criminals to trade their illicit goods from hacking tools to stolen data, all undetected and untraceable. Now let's talk about demand. 
The demand in this market is primarily for stolen data, credit card information, personal identities, corporate secrets, you name it. A myriad of buyers, from individual fraudsters to organized crime syndicates, are always on the lookout for valuable data. The higher the demand, the higher the prices, and the more incentive there is for cyber criminals to supply. But what factors influence this demand? Well, it's rather straightforward. The more damage a piece of information can cause, the higher its value. A list of credit card numbers might fetch a decent price, but a database of healthcare records? That's a gold mine. What about price? Just like in any other market, prices fluctuate based on supply and demand. When a new software vulnerability is discovered, its price skyrockets. As more hackers exploit it, the supply increases and the price drops. Similarly, a fresh data breach can drive up prices, but as the information becomes older and less useful, its price decreases. So you see, the cybercrime industry isn't that different from any other market. It's a digital bazaar, a shadowy ecosystem driven by the same economic principles we see in our day-to-day -day lives. In the shadows of the dark net, cybercrime thrives on supply and demand, just like in any other market. So what's the takeaway from our exploration of the economics of cybercrime? In this vast digital universe, cybercrime has become a lucrative industry, powered by a complex ecosystem. The wheels of this cyber world are greased with money, driving the supply and demand of illicit goods and services across the shadowy corridors of darknet markets. The economics of cybercrime isn't just about the money involved, it's about understanding the mechanisms that keep this industry thriving, the supply chains, the demand drivers, the marketplaces and the players involved. It's about appreciating the fact that cybercrime, like any other industry, operates on the basic principles of economics. Why is this understanding so crucial? Because it gives us the tools to combat this digital threat. Knowledge of the economic structures that support cybercrime allows us to identify vulnerabilities, disrupt supply chains and ultimately devise effective strategies to fight back. Knowledge is power. By understanding the economics of cybercrime, we can better equip ourselves to fight back against this digital menace.